there has increased in investment in manufacturing capacity in the United States. But it's not necessarily because North American firms are bringing back some of the manufacturing activities they pushed away in the past. Uh, the news are that Asian and uh, European firms finding our market very attractive or finding uh, uh, the North American U.S. as an attractive uh, production hub and they're increasing investments. Of course, there are North American firms as well that are increasing investments, but uh, we see more uh, disinvestment in manufacturing by North American corporations and a lot more increase in manufacturing investments to North America by the Asian and European. Is 60% of the increases in uh, manufacturing investments in our region has come from Asia and Europe, and the other 40% has come from American firms. So that is the good news. Uh, then, something that was very clear is that China continues to remain a very important, a very attractive production location for firms. What we saw that is a news to report is before China was thought simply as another low-cost location. I had a lot of workforce and it was definitely the place if the cost was the major determinant. But now, China is attractive as a production location for many other reasons, including the access to a very attractive market. Thinking about uh, the, uh, the middle of the market, right? the middle income consumers in China, it's a huge market. You're talking about 300, 400 million. If you are going to sell uh, washers and dryers and uh, water heaters, uh, definitely that's the place where you have to be. At the same time, they have developed an amazing supplier network for many industries. They have uh, developed flexibility in introducing new products and being able to bring them to the market rather fast. Uh, that's, for example, what attracts Apple making its iPhones in that part of the world. And uh, the quality issues that we used to associate with China in the past, uh, many of them have gone away. Uh, they have lean manufacturing facilities and they have a very good quality standards uh, for many products. Of course, exceptions can always be the case. But China is there, it is a very attractive production hub. We always thought about 30 or 40 percent of the manufacturing in the world is happening in China and uh, we will continue to see that. But now we might see it with a different portfolio of products than before. So that's what was the news in our study. Uh, well, if we're concerned about manufacturing declining in the United States, uh, we will say that our colleagues in Japan and uh, Western Europe are not feeling uh, any better. And actually, they might be feeling a little more uh, worse than us. There's more production outflow away from Western Europe and uh, some um, outflow of production out of Japan. So decline of manufacturing in uh, those uh, developed economies is there, and we observe it clearly in the data. Then uh, the analysis of uh, the decision logic of uh, what the executives use to make uh, their uh, choices in this particular decision instance is, of course, cost always is going to be there, but it's not necessarily the major determinant. There are a lot of other factors. It's not just uh, the cost of producing a product, it's the total cost uh, of the supply chain. That is going to include the logistics, that is going to include uh, finding suppliers, uh, uh, correcting uh, quality, and the total ownership of uh, the total cost of own ownership of the supply chain and the product that are driving considerations. Considerations about the ability in a highly volatile environment to quickly react, and therefore shorter lead times, uh, faster access to the market. Risk issues that were so heavily emphasized with what we saw in Japan with the tsunami and the earthquake, or what we saw in Thailand that created that tremendous um, catastrophic level risks, uh, even in certain parts of uh, the supply chain, are considerations they start thinking about more. They want to diversify, they want to think about those risks, uh, lead times create extra risks, so they got to take them into account. It's a much more complex decision, and we clearly saw it in the decision rationale that our executives provided. Cost is one of the factors, not necessarily in many situations, the most important one. And uh, finally, uh, what we saw uh, clearly is uh, that companies within their own home market, especially developed economies, they would like to produce a large portion of what they sell there in most of the cases. Uh, not necessarily the whole thing, but a large portion. There's a bias towards your home market, uh, also putting production there. 
In places where you're selling a lot and you see substantial sales growth, for sure you would like to produce more. Uh, that's another pattern that clearly comes. Uh, with respect to developed economies and uh, the uh, companies' home markets, we see the bias towards producing there, trying to create that kind of a natural hedge, what I sell and what I produce in the same currency to the extent that I can. But when you think about the rest of the world, how are you going to supply it, always you are looking for those production hubs that will allow you to make the significant investments and then supply the rest of the world from there. And what we see is two emerging production hubs, is Eastern Europe, uh, very attractive both for North American and uh, Western European firms, and uh, uh, South uh, East Asia, which is very attractive, of course, for a lot of the Asian firms, uh, 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 Japanese, of course, and uh, North American firms as well. Uh, so China, Eastern Europe, and uh, the um, uh, Southeast Asia are the major production hubs that we see clearly in our data. So these are the seven key takeaways uh, that I will describe and I will feel comfortable defend and say that for sure they're in the data and uh, all of us that participate in the research team and that is people of the highest caliber, uh, people like Maurice Cohen from Wharton and Howard Lee from Stanford, uh, myself, Panos Kouvelis from Western University in St. Louis and Ricardo Enns from Georgetown and Adi Chai from uh, Santa Clara, and uh, Professor Ahiro Matsuo from Kobe University, and Professor Ann Huchtermeyer uh, from uh, WHU, the Koblet School of Management. We all feel comfortable that we believe these trends that I just described are there and are happening, but they're happening right now. What is going to be happening five, ten years down the road? Um, we expect some of that will continue, but uh, five years, ten years down the road, we may need another study and another collection of data to exactly tell you what's the current situation.